Roughly around four years ago, Audi launched their first ever Q8. It was petrol driven and launched in India. But now they've done a facelift and they've changed the powertrain. So what do we have? We have here today the Q8 e-tron Sportback. There's also an SUV version and both of them are fully electric. We're driving them today in windy, nice, sunny Bangalore to find out how they perform, how the interior space is, how the quality is, how much range they have. And we're going to answer all your questions today about the Q8 e-tron Sportback. When it comes to uh, exterior design, the changes to the Q8 are, well, there are quite a few changes. You see, uh, the earlier Q8, I remember, used to have a massive grille, but that's changed now. It's got a rather smaller grille on this e-tron Sportback version. You also get a 2D logo of the Audi 4 Rings logo. It's a 2D form. Um, it's interesting. Uh, we'll have to see how it pans out. I mean, as of now, it stands out, but maybe I like the earlier metal grille a little more. Uh, you get large sweeping headlamps, you get a functional air duct here in the front bumper which helps with the cooling. You get 20 inch wheels and this is an interesting touch on an Audi for the first time. You get the self-leveling centre caps so at all times no matter how much you're moving or how fast you're moving, the wheel cap will level itself to make the Audi logo sit straight all the time. Uh, you get charging ports on both sides, so that's an interesting touch. Whether you're parked on this side of the charger or the other side, you can use the ports to charge your car either way. That helps. Um, you also get this sloping roof line, which is basically what the Sportback means. It also means there's less headroom inside the car, but that's something we'll come to later. You get these big full width LED tail lamps. And I have to say overall, uh, the e-tron looks quite good. It stands out. Maybe in a brighter color, there, are, there were other cars. There was a particularly red car that was nicer looking. Overall, nice design. People won't get offended by it. I think most people will quite like how the e-tron looks. what the exterior of the Audi Q8 e-tron looks like. Uh, now what about the interior? Well, it gets basic update but it has everything that you would need. I really like this black and brown combination. There's this aluminum finish on the dash. There's also piano back finish over most of the dash and I think it works quite well. It's got two haptic uh, feedback touchscreens. You get a large all-color instrument cluster, all LEDs of course. So all of these elements are there. It's also quite well equipped. You get a panoramic sunroof, a ventilated seats, full climate control, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. As far as space is concerned, the front seats of the Q8 are very comfortable. They're quite nice, but the rear is still a compromise. Remember, we're driving the Sportback, not the full SUV. The Sportback, because of its coupe roof line, obviously has a compromise as far as headroom is concerned. So if you're taller than six foot, then the rear seat of the Q8 Sportback might not be the best place for you. Also, because of the transmission tunnel in between, it has the quattro all-wheel drive system. Because of the transmission tunnel, uh, it's actually suitable for four adult passengers rather than five. The fifth would be a very tough squeeze. Quality levels are excellent. The insulation from outside noise and all that is also very, very good. When it comes to mechanical changes, the biggest change that the Q8 e-tron gets is that it's got a bigger battery compared to the older e-tron. So now the battery is 114 kilowatt hours. The claimed range in the WLTP cycle is 600 kilometers, but I think that's very optimistic. What we've seen today driving uh, it in a mix of urban and highway uh, conditions is that somewhere between 350 to 400 kilometers is what you should realistically expect to get on a single charge from the Q8 e-tron. Power wise, of course, there's a lot of power. There's 408 bhp, there's 664 nm of torque. 
zero to hundred comes up in just five point two seconds, so it's fast, and you can feel it. It's it's got instant acceleration, no matter what speed you're doing. It's really really quick. Three digit speeds, super easy. But after one twenty, you get the beeper going off. So obviously, we stuck to below one twenty. High speed handling, as you would expect from an Audi, is very very good. And what is more impressive for me is the air suspension. Air suspension is standard fit, and it delivers really good ride quality on broken roads. It's very very efficient, despite the fact that you are running large twenty inch wheels. It's a very comfortable car, and high speed stability is of course not an issue at all. What's also impressive is the steering. It's got a decent amount of feel to it. You can throw it around, and while the Q8 is quite heavy, I expect over two tons, it doesn't feel like the mass. Like in some EVs, you can really feel the mass of the car when you're braking, when you're turning. But in the Q8, all that is very well balanced, and it handles quite nicely. We threw it around on some curvy roads. I mean, it was very, very impressive to drive. Anything that I don't like, well, other than the fact that there's a compromise in the rear seat, the Q8. Etron is a very very competent product. It looks quite decent. Interiors are very nice. Equipment levels are very high, and I think it's going to be priced in the 1.2 1.3 crore bracket. Considering that the earlier Ice Q8 was around the 1 crore rupee mark, well, it's expensive. It's not for everybody, but I think the only suggestion I would give you if you're looking for a Q8 Etron is that if you value style, then you can get the Sport Pack. But if you need interior room, If you need that space, if you need that practicality, then stick to the standard body style SUV, the Q8 e-tron. Otherwise, well, not much to complain about Q8 e-tron. It performs brilliantly. It's a little bit not too involving to drive, but that's something that's with EVs. Most of them are not very involving. Folks who are more used to ICE vehicles only miss that appeal in EVs. Otherwise, can't complain about the e-tron. It's brilliant it does everything it says and it does it rather well